It's another edition of the Kelly Wells Show presented by Appalachian Wireless. Andrew Joyce back in with you this week, and thanks so much, Joe Kenzer, for uh, filling the seat last week. We're joined by the head coach of our University of Pikeville Bears, Coach Kelly Wells. He's a Kentucky high school state champion. He's a college national champion. He's a Kentucky, or he's a high school national coach of the year and a college national coach of the year. We call him our coach. He is coach of our U Pike Bears now, 19 and 5. And uh, Coach Kelly Wells coming off a tough week last week in the Mid South Conference. The Mid South Conference, they're all tough weeks, but a couple of losses on the road. Yeah, we really did. We struggled late game situation in both those games. We played in spurts well enough to win uh, either one of those games, but just came up a little bit short. I think we lost both of them by a total of six points, three and three. Uh, so it, 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 we did a lot of good things, and I tried to reiterate that to the guys. Uh, but people are shooting for us now. Sure. It's not like we're just showing up and playing. Uh, and we had two hungry teams. Georgetown was hungry to beat us, so was St. Catherine, and uh, they certainly did. So we've got to regroup this week. Two teams that play a little different style. St. Catherine, one of the most physical teams in the Mid-South Conference, year in, year out. You can, you know what you're going to get out of St. Catherine. They're going to beat. They're going to bang. And uh, I'm just curious if you look at the officials' assignments before the St. Catherine games, because when we see the officials walk on the floor before the game starts, we can generally tell how much they're going to be allowed to get by with. Yeah, there's some of that, and, and I'm glad that we, we rotate our officials a lot because there are certain times you just need to see a different face. Sure. Uh, they're giving a great effort. They're trying hard, just right. like our players are. Just some of them call Tuesday, Friday night high school games and then turn around and call Thursday, Saturday college games. And, I mean, it's, it's an epidemic going around. It's just the, the, the play is so physical right. that basketball is getting left behind. It's sure. becoming a football wrestling match. And a skilled player and a person that's got a, a talent level really gets lost in the shuffle of guys who are just more physical. And right. uh, that's – that's the bad part of that. Yeah, uh, Major League Baseball um, umpires are known for guys. They call a lot of strikes. They don't call a lot of strikes. That and it's just uh, they're individuals. They're humans, and they have personalities, and they have certain styles. And I think we see that. And it, it's just an observation as a broadcaster. We've developed over the years that you can tell. And uh, physical play. It's it's not the Bears' forte. No, it's not. And. Maybe it's my fault that I haven't adjusted more, but I'm, I'm a basketball coach. Sure. I, I didn't want to coach football. I didn't want to coach wrestling. I didn't want to coach weightlifting and bodybuilding. Uh, we're going to continue to play basketball. That's, right. that's what we're, we're going to do. And the thing that we just would appreciate is, as coaches and players is what, what the first half is the same in the second half. Don't exactly. change the game in the middle of the game. And, and that's frustrating uh, because you never get a feel of what you want to do. But they're, they're trying hard. I don't, I don't have any doubts that they're doing sure. their very best just as sometimes our guys make mistakes and they're trying their very best. Right. And, uh, we just have to learn to adapt. Absolutely. Bears coming off two losses on the road. What's the mindset in practice this week? I didn't really care what their mindset was this week. We, we're, we're working. Uh, yeah. that's, that's the key for us. And, and yesterday we busted it as hard as we could bust it. Uh, we'll do tonight after after the show. We'll, we'll we'll practice very hard tonight back in the expo, and really trying to get back to the basics. We're doing some shell drill things, uh, some defensive one on one type stuff. Uh, St. Catharines, who give them a ton of credit, second half shot eighty percent from the field That's and hundred percent from the free th- or from that, the three point line. That is crazy. And, and give them credit for a lot of that. But out of 80 possessions, we had 53 negative defensive possessions. That's not a good ratio. Right. So uh, we're going to get back to working on some of those things. And we shot it well enough, 47% uh, from the field and 43 from the three. That's well enough for us to win on the road, sure. uh, but not if you give up 80%. So we've, right. we've got to work on that. You, you look at those numbers and you break things down. You have certain numbers on the chalkboard before games that you talk to, with your players about. And I know, I know one of the keys for you is you look at if we score 90 points, we're typically going to be on the win side if we hit some of the other numbers. Uh, you shot it well enough, but St. Catherine, they got some easy baskets. So obviously, uh, defense will be something that's focused on uh, during the course of preparation for this week's games. No question. And it, it's, you know, again, we did a lot of good stuff, played well enough in spurts to win the games, but when it gets down to it, uh, you got to get some stops. Uh, you just got to, you just got to buck up and say, enough's enough. We're going to stop you here, be tough enough to run our stuff. Just weren't weren't that way on the road. You got the road's hard to win. Absolutely, uh, Mid South Conference is hard to win on the road, and we just came up a little bit short in both those games. It's going to cost us a little spot in the in the conference. It's going to cost us some spots in the polls, but uh, we have every opportunity to earn those back. Last week, number seven in the nation. We'll have this week's ratings coming out uh, as part of this show, and I want to talk again about being on the road because uh, during the course of this year, you've got five losses. 
four of those have come on the road. How different is it for your team to prepare? Do you do anything differently on the road? Obviously, being on the road at home, there, there are those obvious differences, but do you do anything extra to try to prepare your team? Well, I think it becomes routine what you try to do. The, it doesn't matter at what level, if it's high school level, but especially college at, at the NEIA to Division One level, going on the road and winning somebody else's place is tough. These are college players. Sure. Uh, we may be the better team per se, may have a better record, but you know, winning on the road is a difficult thing to do. And our mindset has been good, it just hasn't been great. Right. And when you got teams that are playing great against you, good's not good enough. And we've got to continue to work on it. But we have a routine. We travel with the women's team. It's worked perfectly. Uh, and I think typically if you look at anybody's schedule and their records, most people's losses are going to be on the road. Sure. Five losses, 14 points, I think, combined in those five losses, and uh, uh, that close to being uh, right there uh, near perfection. We talk about the Bears. We wrap up a couple of losses last week in the Mid-South Conference, and we'll do that with highlights coming up next. There were highlights from these two games. Of course, losses at Georgetown and St. Catherine, and then we'll look ahead to what's coming up this week. We've got home games at the Expo Center, including Senior Day coming up on Saturday. It's the place to be this week uh, to see the Upike Bears, both the men's and women's team, as they close out their home portion of the regular season. Stay tuned. More Kelly Wells Show on the way. When we come back next, we will take a look at highlights. It's presented by Appalachian Wireless. Welcome back in the Kelly Wells Show, presented by Appalachian Wireless. Andrew Joyce, along with our coach, Coach Kelly Wells, of the University of Pikeville Bears men's team, ranked seventh in the nation last week. We'll have this week's ratings as the show goes. A little later, we'll pass those along to you. The Bears coming off road losses on the road at Georgetown. It's the team that everyone in the Mid-South Conference loves to hate. It's a tough place to play. It's an old gym with a lot of character. And you go to Georgetown, a team that uh, has the same type of feelings about Pikeville. They're, they're a team that Georgetown circles on their calendar every year. It's one of their biggest crowds. They pack the place out. The students show up, and it's just a good old rivalry. It really has. You know, it's, it's been a great rivalry since long before I was around or, sure. or even, even thought about the Pikeville Georgetown rivalry, but it's gotten better. Uh, the teams are very, very comparable, very similar. Uh, the crowd there was great. The crowd here was great. And it's good for conference play, it really is. It's good for basketball at our level. Uh, a lot of high school kids were there in attendance to, sure. to see it, some recruits, and it uh, just was great. I mean, if we can get those televised some days, other than, you know, just get them around the state, is unbelievable coverage for us. Obviously, our local people are spoiled. We get to see us all the yeah. time, uh, and they know what kind of level of basketball. But if you want to see a great, college basketball game, both sides of men's and the women's, watch the Georgetown Pikeville series. You mentioned that and uh, today, the Mid-South Conference announcing uh, the conference uh, tournament championships will be televised and, and of course, uh, regional television or national television even. No, no question. That, that's always good. Uh, we spoil our folks around here because yeah. we, we want to do that. They deserve sure. that and they, they, we want them to see our players play. Uh, but we're also going to be nationally televised. We've got to get to that final game to, to get that honor right. and get that reward. But certainly it was a great carrot to hang out in front of our guys as an opportunity to be on TV. Absolutely. Coach Kelly Wells, let's take a look at highlights. First, let's go to Georgetown as uh, the Bears came up short in this one, 83-76 the final. Here, here's a nice assist, one of our half-court sets. Here's Deuce making a great play on the baseline. Uh, finds open shooter with Trevor in the corner right in front of their bench early in the game, which was a big, big start for us. We got off to a great start. Uh, here's another pull-up jumper by Deuce in front of their bench again beginning of the game to pull it to even. Great rebound here by Trevor Setti. Leads the break, six foot eight, makes a great outlet pass to Chris Johnson who feeds Greg McGee running the floor. That's when we're, we're at our best when we're doing that. Causes them to get a timeout. Here's Trevor again, another, another facet of his game, rebounding the outlet pass. Here's Chris Johnson going in, making a high tier drop layup right over one of their better players. Nice post feed. 
had a little bit of trouble getting it in the rim all night long from the interior, but we did make some hustle plays, continue to make hustle plays. Got a second chance point here by Trevor said he kicks it out, and we find our shooter on the corner, Dukes Briscoe rims it out, but a four shot on one trip, and three of those offensive rebounds were Trevor said he's great plays, great plays. He's become a complete player. Yeah, another shot fake, great move to the rim, got a three off on, on one of their better perimeter defenders. Here's another one of our half court sets, Trevor catches an elbow, makes a great spin, they can go double team, and finds a, finds a cutting Chris Johnson to the, to the rim. Here we are again in the half court, running another one of our sets, coming out, good shot fake, not settling, getting them uh, to the free throw line. That's important for us. We've got we to get 18 to 20 free throws a game to be where we want to be. Half court set and get Trevor uh, going to the free throw line because he creates mismatches with so many people. He does. Here's, here's uh, Terrence Santillo getting a nice basket, a reward for boxing out and getting good position from Trevor Setti there again, another assist for him. And uh, we're down, disappointed, and down one at halftime here. Down one, but typical Georgetown Pikeville. Yep, no question. Here we are from this shot, Deuce Briscoe running the paint, getting rim to rim. He's done a better job of finishing around the hole there for a while. He was missing some of those easy ones. Now he's getting those down. Here's a great move by Josh Whitaker. And we've got to get him more aggressive. Once he's aggressive like that, everything kind of falls in place for him. But a great move. And again, another drive to the basket. Uh, we're going up against 6'8", six 6'9". Six so our guys here, our guys do a great job of getting where they're supposed to be, get offensive rebound put back. They double team the ball. We have a great opportunity for us to get a help side rebound. And we do, Colt Chapman gets a nice put back on the side. Here's what our half court says and just worked continually when we ran it correctly. We just had a few guys that had some brain issues during the game. We couldn't get it ran right every time, but Terrence with a nice catch and finish there. And again, a great post up here. Actually had Terrence going, uh, scores th three straight possessions, then he runs down the floor and uh, makes a fourth grade mistake by running his mouth and gets a technical that we, we addressed for sure. But a great drive by Chris Johnson here getting to the rim. He had a great series over the weekend. There's Josh being aggressive, and how about Trevor? Doing just a great job. I know we gave him a hard time defensively, but you know he really has come a long way offensively, doing a lot of different things for us. And, um, came up a little short-handed in that one, didn't pull it out, uh, but did a lot of things nonetheless. Very, very good. We just ran into a team that was uh, was was really driven to beat us. Uh, Georgetown coming in last week, ranked 22, 22nd in the country. U Pike seventh, uh, obviously at home. Hungry for that game. They know they get a win and have a good week. They move up in the ratings and solidify uh, their shot in the conference standings and, and then looking on down the road as well. 83-76, the Bears lose. Then you travel to St. Catherine and, uh, of course, uh, physical play. We've talked about it, uh, one of the most physical teams in the league. We'll take a look at those highlights now. And I think our guys responded pretty well. They're doing better with handling bumps and pushes and shoves. Uh, we, were, we were being a lot more aggressive. Here we are again. They run a little 1-1. One -one three zone, we did a great job attacking it in the first half. There's Chris Johnson with great penetration, a little teardrop over the middle. And again, Chris just created so many problems with his penetration. Here he finds a deuce, gets an and one here. Should have been an and one, they don't call it. Uh, but again, here we're attacking their one, one, two. Terrence with a nice screen on the ball. Trevor with a long jump shot, and he, he got it going. I think he had 25 or 26 in this game. Here he's down, great entry pass here to Deuce. Deuce with his little floater. Right across the middle, and you'll get a talk to a guy that works with him and our guys every day on that on those floaters. Here's Greg McGee with a great individual defensive play. Gets an and one, great finish, strong play. He's really learning learning how to play and what we want out of him. He's doing a great job. Another unselfish play, a little teardrop for Chris Johnson at the free throw line. Wonderful, wonderful play. Good high post catch, awesome pass. Not ideal on the shot, but nonetheless he. Greg McGee rolls it in. Not not how you teach you. You try to get the shoulders squared for those watching at home. Yeah, and there's Deuce. Got a great screen from Colt Chapman and, and uh, got a nice bucket for us. Here we are again against their zone. Uh, Deuce breaks it up top, finds a great uh, block shot for Colt Chapman. Colt gets a great lift in this. I should have played him more in the second half. I, I made a few mistakes coaching the second half in this game. Then you got Chris Johnson, did a great job from the three. Uh, Halftime score. 51-46, so the numbers are okay in this possession here. But up, up and then, who knew St. Catherine would shoot 80% in the second half? Yeah, we, we didn't do a great job defensively and give them a ton of credit. A ton of credit. They did a nice job. Here's Trevor creating havoc on the baseline. Uh, does a great job finishing. Again, here against their zone. 
and, and their zone is, is unique. It shouldn't work against us at all, but some possessions it did. There's Deuce coming on down screen and uh, knocking it down. Great pass ahead by Trevor. CJ lines it up and dials in a three from the corner. Another great possession here. Deuce getting to the rim. It's like the partner of the Red Sea. Everybody turned away and he got him an easy one. Here's CJ creating havoc again defensively. Finds an open Deuce Briscoe in the corner for three. Here's what we like to be right here. After a made basket, got it out. Nice year on move, teardrop, basket. Great out of bounds. Uh, execution by our guys. A little left handed scoop shot hook from T, and that was a good play by him. Here's a nice roll of the basket. Great reward by Deuce to, to Big T, and a nice finish there as well. You guys see this, uh, the floor so well, and we've talked about how unselfish this team is. They are, and you notice in this game we didn't take a whole lot of bad shots. We, uh, we were pretty good down the stretch. In the last minute, two minutes, we had a couple uh, shots that I didn't think were winning plays, but for the most part, we did a lot of good things. Just, uh, again, came up a little bit short, had opportunities to win it. Um, but now, we'll, we're, I guess we're saving those close wins for when it gets down the stretch here in the tournament time. We'll take those. We'll Fe take those too. February, March, close wins. We'll take those. 93-90 St. Catherine wins. And that wraps up last week. We'll take a look at the week ahead. Of course, Lindsey Wilson, college ranked number three in the country. They're atop the Mid-South Conference Thursday night at the Expo Center. And uh, that's a special night. And we want to be sure and talk about that and also the women's action Thursday and Saturday. Senior day coming up Saturday. We want folks there. Campbellsville University comes in. They're also receiving votes nationally. So uh, a couple of great opponents coming in. Uh, should be uh, great basketball and we'll get the scouting report on those coming up in just a little bit. We put last week to bed and we'll look ahead. When we come back, we'll take a look at women's action from last week. Head coach Bill Watson joins us on the Kelly Wells Show. It's presented by Appalachian Wireless. Welcome back into the Kelly Wells Show, presented by Appalachian Wireless. We talk U Pike basketball. Of course, uh, the Bears men team, they come off two losses last week on the road in Mid South Conference play. And the U Pike women, uh, they're coming off a one and one road trip in the conference and then back at home on Monday, two and one, and they've won four of five and now sit at 9 and 16 overall. Joined by head coach Bill Watson now. And uh, Coach Watson, the U Pike women, playing their best basketball of the year. Well, we, we're playing very well. Um, you know, we we didn't play very well Saturday at St. Catherine, um, but we, uh, we we had played uh, very well up to that point. We played uh, awfully awfully well at Georgetown. Uh, I thought defensively we were as active uh, as we've been probably in four or five years uh, in the half court and uh, uh, forced them uh, in, in a four for twenty five shooting from the arc, and that's their staple uh, is perimeter shooting, uh, rebounded well enough and, and attacked. Uh, on the offensive end enough to, to keep them honest, to force them to play zone the second half. They're not used to playing zone. Sure. Um, so we, uh, it, it was a real good win. If you'd have told me before we left that we would have split, I, I would have taken it. Sure. It's a tough road trip to go to Georgetown. St. Catherine, just like the men, the, the Mid-South Conference, Women's Conference, it's one of the toughest around as well. And when you go on the road, it, it just uh, makes it that much tougher. And uh, these are college athletes. They are talented uh, up and down the Mid-South Conference. You don't get a week off. You don't get a day off. If you go into a conference game, especially on the road, it, it's a challenge. It, it is. And, and, you know, we, we recruited three or four of those kids that end up at Georgetown. So, you know, they know us. We know them. Sure. And, um, you know, it, it's a place where, you know, early in my career we played very well there. The middle few years we didn't play real well. Uh, the last three or four years we've actually played pretty well there. Um, and, and so it's a place we're comfortable with, uh, but it, it does feel good to get a win down there. It, does, does it make it – Georgetown has that feel, and some of the gyms in the Mid-South Conference do, but Georgetown has a high school gym feel to it. Does that make a, a comfort level maybe for the women? Well, I – 
Uh, maybe so. Uh, it, it can be a little intimidating, I think, if uh, if you're not haven't been in there before, because um, everybody is on top of you. Um, you know, the, the the crowd. There's not a lot of room on the sideline. Not right. a lot of room on the baseline. On the one end, you've got the baseball slash football team hollering it when you're trying sure. to inbound the ball. The cheerleaders are right on top of you. Uh, the scores table is right on right on the sideline. So. Uh, once you once you get past those jitters and settle down, I I, I think it's a comfortable gym. Yeah. Um, uh, to play in, of course, I've been there 20 years now, and and you know a lot of summer camps uh, when uh, I, I worked when I was younger in that gym. So, you know, I, I I'm sort of used to it. So, uh, I, you know, but, but once you get jitters settled down, I think it's a very comfortable. Gym. It just has a feel of a high school gym. It's one of those old gyms, small gym, tight mm -hmm. gym. And uh, it, it's got a certain feel, much like high school. And yes. I, I can would imagine me, the girls that particularly played at smaller high school programs, uh, they can relate to it and get a, a comfort to, comfortable feel there. Four of your last five playing very well. You've got a couple of home games <coughs> coming up, and uh, you wind down the home portion of your season. Let's get a quick scouting report on Lindsey Wilson and then Campbellsville Saturday, Senior Day, and uh, also some special events going on. Well, Lindsey Wilson comes in. Um, they're, they're, they're right ahead of us in the conference standings. Uh, right now we are ninth. Uh, Lindsey is eighth at six and nine. Um, if we can knock them off, we would have a split throughout through, through the season, season series. Uh, head to head, and then you start looking at tiebreakers. If we can get to tied with them in the in the conference standings, uh, the Georgetown win would be the next tiebreaker. Right. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So it, that that's our goal right now to get to Lindsay and then see where we can go after that. But if we can get to Lindsay, and and the reason that's significant is because the only top eight teams right. go to the to the conference tournament, and, and that's what we've talked about. From day one, that we've we've got back into the race a little bit with a couple of wins the last couple uh, couple times, so so our our focus is really really heavily on Lindsay right now. Um, then you, you know we get a day one day to prepare for Campbellsville. Right. <coughs> Excuse me, and uh, they, they come in. They're twelfth or thirteenth, uh, I believe, uh, in in the, in the poll that came out today. Um, a good shooting basketball team, and uh, it'll be a lot of very very emotional day. Uh, our seniors uh, will be their last home game at right. the University of Pikeville, uh, so we want to send them out uh, on a positive note. Uh, also, we have our uh, Play for K game, uh, paint game, breast cancer game. It goes by a lot of different names now. Sure. Um, it, it, we couple with the WBCA, Women's Basketball Coaches Association, to put that on. and. Uh, we'll, we'll be passing out ribbons and pink ribbons, and, and we'll have uh, pink shooting shirts on, and uh, and we'll try to uh, uh, try to, to, to continue to draw awareness to that. Absolutely, it's uh, always a special day, and it coincides with <laughs> Senior Day at the University of Pikeville. Of course, Thursday night at the Expo Center, six o'clock tip-off for Lindsey Wilson, and then Saturday, two o'clock for Senior Day. And the uh, and the breast cancer awareness game uh, need a, a great crowd out. The final two home games of the regular season to see these, <coughs> these two teams that have been, become so very special to U Pike fans. And then when you say goodbye to the seniors, folks that have been with the program for so long, and they're certainly a, even that much more special to the program. I know it is always is an emotional day. It is, uh, and, and, and from the women women's standpoint. I mean, you know, we have to deal with it in the locker room pre-game and then and in post-game, and and that and that's fine. I, I'm not opposed to that one sure. bit. Uh, you know, we tr we try to get our kids to show a little bit more emotion and, and to get excited about wins and uh, and things like that. And, and you know, we'll come out and we'll compete. Now we, we have to continue to make shots. Um, obviously, that uh, that makes it a little easier to to, to win games sure. when you put points on the board. Um, if we do that, then, then we'll be okay. Absolutely. Lindsey Wilson Thursday and Campbellsville Saturday at the Expo Center. Uh, special times for you to be able to see the U-Pike women's team as they've won four of their last five playing their best basketball of the year. One reason for that, our guest that's coming up in the U-Pike women's spotlight, Kalisha Johnson. Talk about Kalisha. Um, she, she's really starting to round out into the girl that we thought we were, we were going to have all year. Right. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, you know, she came into a tough situation. Uh, we relied on her awful, an awful lot early in the year. Uh, she's grown used to that now, and she's a slasher. Uh, she's a scorer, uh, has the capability and, and uh, to shoot the ball from the arc, and she's done that very well the last three weeks. Uh, but one thing she's done 
uh, is she's got to the free throw line. And, and you know, I, Coach Wells was talking earlier. You, you want to get some free points, put some points on the board with the clock uh, being stopped. And uh, she was phenomenal against Georgetown, 20 in the first half, 31 uh, for the game. Career high, uh, I believe. Career high, last two with 18 seconds to go to put us ahead by two. We got a couple of stops late. Um, so, you know, she can be a leader on our basketball team. Uh, we ask her to do a lot. You know, we ask her to, uh, to rebound. She, she's a little bit undersized for, for a, a three, four in our league. Uh, but we're not blessed with a lot of size. And, and, you know, everything we've asked her to do, she's done. And, and right now, she's on a tear scoring wise. There you go. We'll meet Kalisha Johnson. When we come back, that's UPike Women's Head Coach Bill Watson. You're tuned to The Kelly Wells Show. It's presented by Appalachian Wireless. Welcome back in. You're tuned to the Kelly Wells Show presented by Appalachian Wireless. We talked to Pike basketball. The men's team currently ranked seventh in the country. The Pike women, they've won four of five and playing their best basketball of the year. And we've talked with Coach Bill Watson. And uh, uh, now our favorite part. We step into the player spotlight. Joined now by a 5'9 junior guard, uh, Kalisha Johnson out of Shelbyville, Tennessee. Welcome to the Kelly Wells Show. Kalisha, we talk about, uh, of course, your basketball background. We want to talk about that, coming off a career high. But first, let's talk about your academics. Student athlete, the word student comes first. So what's your academic major? What do you plan to do in the future? My major right now is pre-education. Huh? I become planning on coming to be a, probably an elementary teacher. I think I'm aiming towards second grade, uh -huh. somewhere in there. really like working with kids and... I think that's a really good idea for me. Yeah. Plus, I have an opportunity to probably coach little kids basketball, right. which is something that I really love. So, Have you been around little kids? Do you have younger children in, in your family? No, I have nieces and nephews. Uh -huh. so I'm the youngest of four, so I'm the baby. But you've been around them. Yes. And, and you found a good age. Second grade, pretty good. Stay away from the middle school kids. <laughs> they, they have attitude. You, you want to go there, and I think that's a great idea. Pre-education. Did you have a certain teacher maybe when you were growing up that affected you? Well, yeah, but it was it wasn't until high school. Right. Uh, my um, algebra teacher, actually, she was the NHS um, sponsor, so she really had a big effect on my life and my turnaround with my grades and stuff, with throughout high school. So that right. really persuaded me to go into teaching. Obviously, playing college basketball at, at the next level, uh, you have a certain love for the game. Yes. You have played it growing up, and we'll talk about that background just a little bit. You mentioned maybe coaching younger kids. Would you be interested maybe somewhere down the road coaching high school or even in college? I doubt it. No? I'll stick to the younger kids. You've seen what it's done to Bill Watson's hair, yes. haven't you? <laughs> yeah, it, it, coaches, they either end up gray or without it. Yeah. So it's a great idea. If you're going to coach, coach the young ones. Let's talk about your, your playing days. Let's talk about when Kalisha Johnson started playing basketball seriously in, in organized leagues. I probably I started when I was six, but it, I really didn't get serious with it until probably about middle school. Mm -hmm. I quit all other sports just to play basketball because I felt like that was more important to me. Uh -huh. That's what I wanted to focus on. What other sports did you play in those I years? I played softball. I played a year of soccer. did track and field throughout high school. Uh -huh. So I've just been busy year-round, basically. Right. But you locked in on basketball about middle school time. Let's talk about your high school career and, and your high school playing days. I was actually a point guard in high school for four years. So right. I was the smallest one on the team. I didn't really play a lot to my junior senior year. So being coming down to a different position is kind of hard transition, but I have to get used to it. So. You, uh, you, from high school, you go on to junior college and you arrive at the University of Pikeville. How did that process take place? How was Kalisha Johnson recruited to the University of Pikeville? Uh, my coach called me and was like, you have a visit to go on. I'm not really sure how he got in contact with right. the University of Pikeville and that I needed to be there or we was going to have trouble. So me and my other teammate, Jamie, drove up here, visited the campus, 
met with the coaches, talked to a few of the players that were here on campus, and that's really how it came about Pikeville. What did you think about Pikeville on your first visit here? Uh, I fell in love with the gym, the yeah. expo. I really did. The campus is really nice. The cafeteria, well, when I came here, it was under construction, but felt like it was going to be a good place to come. Right. And it's it's been a great fit. And uh, I know the uh, Pikeville community has welcomed Kalisha Johnson because we've seen what she can do on the court. 31 points a career high last week at Georgetown. What did you feel like after that game? I really didn't know that I had 31 points. I was just kind of playing. Uh, my teammates are the ones that told me that I did so good. I just kind of played and did what I was supposed to do for our team and came out with a win. You teams now won four of five playing the best basketball of the year at this point. What do you attribute that to? Why has it started to click for this team? I feel like we're playing more as a team. We have more people coming aboard. We have more people playing each game instead of just two or three this game, two or three that game. So I feel like we're playing more for each other now. Since it's the end of the year, we have to try to get in the spot to actually go to the tournament. And playing with that goal in mind, You've won four of five, and it's been almost two weeks since head coach Bill Watson announced to your team that he was going to be resigning at the, the end of the year and uh, and uh, leaving the university. Uh, what was the attitude like in the locker room after that? Uh, we were happy that we won, but with the news, it was kind of, I don't know if we're supposed to celebrate. We were kind of hit with bad news, which brought everybody kind of down, but he still wanted us to celebrate our win, even though he had told us some bad news. So we were kind of like down, but not down because we had just won. So it was right. kind of hard to um, understand what was really going on at the time. But the day after, I think everybody really realized what was said and we just kind of went from there. Time to lock it in, get focused. Two home games coming up this week, Lindsey Wilson Thursday and then Senior Day on Saturday before three road games. Uh, Taking a look at the schedule, it looks like the UPAC women can finish out strong, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the Mid-South Conference Tournament. We'll look forward to that. Kalisha Johnson, 5'9", junior out of Shelbyville, Tennessee, part of the UPAC women's program, coming off a career high, 31 points at Georgetown, as the UPAC women have won four of five, and now sit 9 and 16 overall. You can see Kalisha and the UPAC women's team Thursday night at the Expo Center as they will take on Lindsey Wilson College. It's a 6 p.m. tip-off Saturday afternoon at 2, and we'll look forward to seeing you there for those women's men's doubleheaders in the Mid-South Conference. When we come back, we'll step back into the spotlight, and we'll talk with a graduate assistant coach with the UPike men's team. That's coming up next. Matt Bringman on the Kelly Wells Show, presented by Appalachia Wireless. Welcome back in to the Kelly Wells Show, presented by Appalachian Wireless. We talk about the University of Pikeville Bears basketball program. The Bears men's team currently ranked seventh in the nation. New ratings due out, and we'll have those for you momentarily. Also, thanks to UPike women's head coach Bill Watson, and in the player spotlight, Kalisha Johnson from the UPike women's team, as they've won four of five, playing great basketball right now. Now we'll step into the spotlight on the men's side. We've talked to the players this year. So from there, we go to the coaching staff and joined now by a graduate assistant, Matt Bringman with the UPike men's program. Matt, welcome to the Kelly Wells Show. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. We're going to go the same way we do with players because you're still a young guy. You can still remember a lot of those questions we ask. Uh, a graduate assistant, let's talk about your playing days and, and uh, how you got into coaching and then how you arrived at the University of Pikeville. I've always been a basketball junkie, just been a basketball nut. Um, I played four years of college basketball at Palm Beach Atlantic University down in West Palm Beach, Florida. Right. Um, and just always, always knew I wanted to be a coach, just wanted to stay in basketball. Knew I couldn't make any money playing professionally, so sure. wanted to stay in the profession and, and uh, make a career out of it. Absolutely. It's, uh, they say if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your I, life. I don't feel like I'm working. <laughs> Absolutely. You played at the next level. You played college basketball. Obviously, you've had coaches that have affected you during the course of your playing career. 
Talk about some of those that may have made the decision easier for you to decide to go into coaching as a career. Yes, definitely. Um, I had a really good middle school coach when I was in seventh, eighth grade. I um, always had a passion for the game, but he, he kind of got me to focus in and narrow in on uh, different aspects of it. And um, I really, really thought then I'd really like to be a coach. And uh, unfortunately, I've had some bad ones around the, around sure. the way, too. And uh, I've kind of learned what not to do from some of those guys right. and, and what to do. So um, Learn the best of both worlds. Some of the some of the best lessons we learn are things that we shouldn't do, yeah. and uh, it certainly goes with coaches as well. You go from Florida in, in your playing career, and let's talk about some some stops. How you arrived at the University of Pikeville from West Palm Beach? Well, to be honest with you, um, I was actually born in Toledo, Ohio, and I'm a native of Jacksonville, Florida. And I was at Weber International University last year, and um, we actually played at the University of Pikeville last year. Sure. Um, my mentor down in Jacksonville, uh, Mike Gillespie, knows Coach really well. His son played uh, at Moorhead State right. with Coach Wells. So um, kind of gave him a call, and I knew Coach was going to be down there and met Coach down there. And um, Coach was actually nice enough to let me sit in on one of their practices. Right. And immediately right afterwards, I called Coach, Coach G, and I said, this guy's unbelievable. I mean, he is great. Um, so that's kind of how that worked, and um, getting up to Pikeville, it was just Coach Wells. I yeah. mean, he's, he's unbelievable, and I'm, I'm learning every day. And We've yes. got to tone you down, <laughs> see, because we've got people listening and watching right now. We're trying to keep that a secret, <laughs> that Coach Wells is not all that publicly. You know, you don't want to – we're afraid we're going to lose him. I don't, I don't know how you could lose somebody in this town. You know, being here since August, I mean, it's unbelievable. This town is amazing. Yeah. Coach, since you got here, obviously you were impressed with Coach Kelly Wells' first uh, first impression, as many people are with Coach Kelly Wells. He, he He's one of those people that you know immediately is a quality person, and uh, he's one of those guys that you want to be around, whether it's a player, a coach, a fan, a broadcaster, whatever the case may be. But – since that time, since you've had time to, to spend on the road with him, what type of what's your impression of Coach Wells now? He's the best. Yeah, he is flat out the best. Um, I've learned something every day since right. I've been around him. Um, he he probably gets tired of it, but I'm always kind of kind of picking his brain and, and asking about certain situations, um, just because I, I I love to learn and, and he's he's great to learn from. Sure. I mean he's. He's really good. So. Matt Bringman, graduate assistant coach with the Upike men's basketball program. And, uh, Matt, let's talk about some of your future plans. Where do you go from here? Um, really, I, I, I love to stay around here, get my master's degree, um, keep learning from coach. And um, the ultimate goal, the ultimate dream is to become a Division One coach. Um, so I think this was the, the best spot for me so I can learn under coach and um, kind of help have him help me guide and, and lead me to my dream and my goal. So Let's – Talk with the folks that are tuned in tonight about a graduate assistant coach. Coach Kelly Wells, he's high profile. Folks, they see him on this program. They see him on the, on the sidelines. They, they may see a graduate assistant coach on the sidelines, but what are his duties during game time, during pregame, during uh, scouting time? road trips. What does a graduate assistant do? Let, let's inform some folks about what some of the duties and responsibilities are of a graduate assistant coach. It's actually, a, it's a lot of work. Um, I'm lucky to have Ryan Whitaker. I mean, we kind of tag team stuff up and um, he's, he's been great. Um, we, we really handle just a lot of the odd stuff. You know, we try to um, make Coach Coach Wells, Coach Compton, Coach Taylor, their job a little easier because um, they, they have tough jobs. So. Sure. Um, me personally, I, I do a lot of the uh, individual development, you know, workouts before games, um, workouts on off days, stuff like that. Um, that's, that's basically it. But. And then that's when guys spend time individually with the coach, maybe working on some aspect of their shot. Maybe it's a free throw. Maybe it's uh, some move that they're working on, uh, a drive to the basket, something that they're having issues with or something they are just trying to develop. A lot goes into college basketball. They look yes. at the sidelines. Coach Kelly Wells, he's got five assistant coaches there. Really, does this guy need that? But when you look at scouting and you look at recruiting, those things never stop. You look at travel, uh, there are a lot of responsibilities there. And, and of course, the video work, player development, and then uh, sometimes uh, just being a uh, father figure or an ear for the players to be able to uh, maybe vent frustrations with, with another member of their staff or, or, for, or whatever, just having life problems. Right, definitely. Matt Bringman, we're glad you're here. Thanks for having me. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, saying uh, uh, the end of this season ends up in late March. 
this UPIC team coming off a couple of lo losses. We're going to ride the ship this week and close out strong. Make a U-turn. We'll be right back on track. There you go. Matt Bringman, graduate assistant with the University of Pikeville Bears. Last week ranked seventh in the nation. This week we'll have those ratings when we come back. With Coach Kelly Wells, it's presented by Appalachian Wireless. The biggest thing about U Pike, you have that one on one with your teachers. You know everybody in your class. You have teachers who will work with you. If you need help, they'll stay after. It's a real good feeling. It's a family atmosphere. I mean, everybody here is super nice. We'll do anything in the world to help you. And it's just that homey feeling. You don't feel away, especially as a freshman. I mean, that's huge. I'm Jennifer. Join me at the University of Pikeville. Welcome back in to the Kelly Wells Show, presented by Appalachian Wireless. I'm Andrew Joyce, your host, along with our coach of the University of Pikeville Bears, Coach Kelly Wells, and the UPike men now standing at 19 and 5, 10 and 5 in the Mid South Conference. Last week, number seven in the nation, two losses on the road. And you look at a ranked team and a loss or two losses, you expect some drops. And uh, we've got the latest ratings out. Lindsey Wilson still atop the conference standings, still ranked third in the country. Georgetown gets a win over you. They had a good week. They moved to number 13, and you pike in this week at number 17 in the country. You pleased with that rating and where you stand coming off last week? I think about where it's expected. Uh, we're tied with Georgetown in the league, but they've beat us twice, so they got the tiebreaker. And uh, it's about where we're expected with a lot of opportunity this week. You know, take care of Lindsey Wilson, Campbellsville at home really puts us in a better position. Uh, you never know how everybody else is going to do, so we've got to really take care of, of our home court. And uh, we've done a pretty good job of that so far, so we've got to continue to win at home. You've got Lindsey Wilson ranked third in the country, Campbellsville coming in on Saturday, and they're receiving votes uh, nationally as well. It's a quality opponent as well. Yeah, well, Lindsey's arguably the best team in the country right yeah. now, the way they're playing. I mean, Columbia and Lee are both very, very good teams, and no disrespect for them, but they, they haven't been tested like Lindsey's been tested. Sure. Um, then you look at Campbellsville, who's won three actually four of their last five playing really good basketball. Vernon Payne was player of the week this week. Uh, so we're catching them on a fire streak too. They're playing as well as they can play. Uh, so it, it, to say it'll be an easy weekend is, is false, but it's one we're excited about because there's a lot of opportunities there for us. Absolutely. And of course, um, special nights coming up at the Expo as well. Not just Senior Day on Saturday, which is always a special time, but another special event coming up this week. Yeah, Thursday night's going to be a Donate Life Night. Uh, you know, CODA sponsored and uh, very personal to me as a transplant patient and my wife's kind of going to spearhead uh, the activities. We've got some great giveaways. We're encouraging everybody to get their driver's license signed sure. uh, for donation. Uh, just a wonderful cause and, and we want to share the word and, and give some information out. The county clerks will be there. Uh, just looking forward to a great night. There's going to be some youth teams that will be there as well. Um, really looking forward to it. I think it'll be a fun night. Mm -hmm. And then to honor our seniors on Saturday is always a special treat. We've got five special seniors. The girls, I think, have three special seniors uh, that we're all going to honor. Um, it's going to be a fun night. Both, both nights will be good, uh, but we want to cap them off and make them real fun by winning ball games. There we go. And uh, Lindsey Wilson, number three in the nation, comes in. The Bears rank 17th. Uh, where else would you want to be if you want to see some great college basketball? Thursday night at the Expo Center, 8 p.m. tip-off for the men, and we'll be on the air at 7.40, and, of course, on Z-Rock 107.5 and live at PikeTV.com, live streaming. And organ donor awareness, we want everyone get, have that driver's license out. If it's not already signed with a sticker on it that there's an organ donor, we want to make sure folks take care of that as well. Pre-game, that can be pre-game activities. Sure. Head to the concession stand, get those things done, find a seat, cheer on the Bears, and let's pick up two wins this week. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. It should be a great weekend, and uh, this is your last two times to see these teams play at home. Otherwise, you're going to have to travel to Ohio or you're going to have to travel to Kansas City or to Frankfurt to see this team play. So uh, get out and watch these guys and gals play. You, you won't regret a bit of it. Absolutely. That's UPike head coach Kelly Wells. He's our coach. The Bears men 19 and 5 and 10 and 5 in the conference, ranked 17th in the nation, hosting Lindsey Wilson Thursday night at the Expo. The women tip off at 6, the men at 8. You'll want to be part of it. Then Saturday, Senior Day festivities. The women tip off at 2, the guys at 4 on Saturday with Campbellsville in town. We'll have complete coverage of U Pike basketball from the opening tip until the post game coming up this week on Xerox 1075 and PikeTV.com. 
uh, for all the staff here at Pike TV and East Kentucky Broadcasting. Our guest tonight, of course, Matt Bringman, Kalisha Johnson from the U-Pike women's team, Coach Bill Watson, and our coach, Kelly Wells. I'm Andrew Joyce. Thanks for tuning in, everyone.